Lesson number four, THV. Um, I'm Stratman from Pipware.com and I use THV as one of my trading strategies. In fact, I'm one of the THV team members. Uh, I'm going to go through and explain in an introductory sense what THV is about and the different components of it. And just so there's, there's quite clear information, there seems to be a lot of confusion out there as to how to use THV, um, even though the rules are extremely um, straightforward and simple. Right, going to the start, THV was created by Cobra Forex. Well, actually, it was created by uh, this guy down here, um, but Cobra has taken it and built indicators around it, and uh, now we've got version 4. Uh, a fantastic system. What you need to understand about THV is, if we just go down and have a bit of a look, and see what Cobra says about uh, THV, Okay, Cobra says here, I use THV mainly for scalp trades. What are scalp trades? Scalp trades are trades of very short duration. Typically people will be on the M1 and M5 time frame. He stated here that many other traders use it on other time frames, but specifically it was built around M1 and M5. And it's clearly stated here that the THV team have proved it only on M1 and M5. If you use M1, you should have extremely good FX skills. Okay, that being said, what we can tell is that this is an incredibly good system, but is meant or created for scalping, M5 and M1. So with that in mind, let's now have a look at the components of THV. Right, the components of THV consist of First of all, you'll notice that the candles are a little bit different than normal. They're Hakanashi candles, which are called average price candles. So what happens with these candles is they take information from the previous candle as well as their own candle to determine uh, their open, close, and high and low. So that's why we, in a bit of an uptrend, you see a lot of green candles. The size of the wicks on the candles um, have certain meaning and can determine momentum of the, the actual current trend. So uh, for instance, down here we don't see bottom wicks on these candles, but as soon as the bottom wicks start appearing, we see that price action is starting to take a turn. You can read all about Hakanashi candles somewhere else. They're not just um, a THV thing. They're used by uh, numerous traders. The second thing you'll notice is the uh, Ishimoku um, cloud. Now this cloud here gives us uh, another feature that we can use. If um, price action is inside the cloud, probably not a good point to be trading. We've got an area of consolidation going on. If price is below the cloud, then uh, it's kind of like a moving average in a sense. We're, we're out of the cloud and we can start trading away from the, uh, the cloud. So if price is above the cloud and trend is upwards, we can, we can uh, trade upwards as well. So in a sense, the, the cloud is kind of like a moving average, and if you watch one of my previous videos, you'll see all about moving averages. We've got the coral as well, which is a longer term kind of thing. Uh, it's a moving average, a 60 period moving average, and it colors uh, yellow when, when um, we've got a flat section of the coral. It's green when we're moving bullish, and it's red when we're moving bearish. So. The initial part of this whole system is that the coral is kind of like our, our longer term lined in the sand to determine whether we're trading short or trading long, uh, as explained in previous videos on, on moving averages. The Ishimoku cloud is giving us a kind of like a faster moving average in a sense, but it's giving us a bit more information. Um, so if we're inside the cloud, we've got consolidation in that kind of uh, period. The last part of the the whole THV system is the the TRIX area. Now TRIX is a triple exponential moving average, which means it's basically an exponential moving average of an exponential moving average of an exponential moving average. So each time it does a moving average of a previous moving average, it smooths out that average. We have two time periods for the uh, for the TRIX. Um, I can't remember just off the top of my head, but one's, one's a shorter period, one's a longer period. One's called, the thicker one is called the slow tricks, and the thin one is called the fast tricks. So, as price 
so if we take an example of uh, price doing something here in regards to THB, if we take this moment here, what we're seeing is we're on the, uh, what time frame are we on? We're on H4 right now, and uh, we could go down to the lower time frame shortly. Remember that it's used on M1 and M5. I'm just showing it on H4, so I haven't got so much noise here, just to, just to demonstrate how this works. So if I take that position there, and I'll just move that out the way slightly, what we're looking for is that price is above our moving average, which is the coral. So price is above the moving average. If it's above, we're happy. We want to see one of these candles close above the Ishimoku cloud, which it has just here. And we also want to see that the fast tricks has crossed the zero line and that, the sl and that it has crossed the slow tricks. Also that the slow tricks and the fast tricks are both green. This is for a long trade and the reverse is true for a short trade. So in this case, that would be considered that all the rules are met for trading long. So cross the fast tricks with the slow tricks. They're both the same color. The fast tricks is cross zero. We've got good slope and uh, separation between the two. That's the most ideal situation. And we're basically going to trade on this trend until we see some kind of situation that alerts us that this particular signal we got for entry is now ending. Now the, the signal for ending this trade is basically that the tricks are now starting to, the fast tricks is now starting to turn away. We've started seeing uh, wicks on the bottoms of the candles. Um, so a good exit point is around here. So that is the fundamentals of trading with the tricks and the coral and Ishimoku cloud. Let's just go down to the time frames we would typically be using and I've added the pivot indicator that I discussed in the previous uh, lesson and what we can see from here is that we, we, uh, we'll just go, go back in time and have a look for a, a signal. So if I look for a signal, I'm just going to turn my update off and just go back until we find a situation where we got a signal. Okay, so here's a signal here. So we'll so this is where all the rules were met on another occasion on the uh, tricks and I'll just take that back off and draw it over the whole length. Right, so we've got a close above the cloud. We are above the price action is above the coral and we've got the fast tricks has crossed the slow tricks and they're both the same color and the fast tricks has crossed zero we've got a nice bit of slope on our fast tricks here and uh, and away the trade goes um, and our exit would be based on as price is starting to stall and get out we're not too worried about this particular candle here in the middle because the uh, the situation is that all the rules are still met and we would have had a stop loss here that uh, would have covered that position so if we go on further, we're probably looking at getting out around here somewhere um, or even back here. It's, it's totally your choice, but um, potentially you'd probably get out at the top of that candle there as it's changing direction in here. So you would have made a nice few pips there. So that's kind of how we do it. What we quite often do is we'll look at the M5 chart like here, and um, it's just a shame that I haven't got a, a setup occurring right now where I could trade it. But um, let's say that this here was a setup that we were going to trade. If we uh, look at our chart, the first thing is that I can see fast tricks cross slow tricks, uh, just gone above zero. We've got a heads up on, on things happening. We've got price above the uh, coral. So let's just move back. Price above the coral, closed above the cloud. We're into all the rules met for a long trade. Now. Obviously, it didn't last very long, but what we would normally do is then switch down to the M1 time frame and get a, a better situation for this trade. And if we went down to the M1 time frame, we would see that price would have been kind of a bit all over the place. And we and so trading on the M5 was not enough. We'd have to go down to the, the M1 and we could get a better entry. And what we're seeing here is not the same kind of rules set up and we'd probably not take this trade. So um, you can see we're above the cloud, we're above the coral, but the Heikinashi candles on M1 are showing stalling there. We haven't got good separation of our, our tricks 
um, even though uh, potentially all the rules are met. I hope that's been helpful to understand just in an introductory way how the THB system works. Thanks, that's Stratman from pipweer.com.